Hello, welcome back. As part of the module 2, we will be discussing about uh, Delta Lake in uh, detail. So as you might be aware, uh, if you have uh, heard about Databricks, uh, Delta Lake is the most important concept uh, that we have to learn, understand in uh, like from basics to the where you can become an expert. Uh, if you want to become an expert in Databricks, uh, understanding the Delta Lake and uh, the architecture of it, how you can use it and uh, what what exactly the formats uh, of the data that you can use and uh, how you can completely make use of a delta tables uh, so that that uh, which is completely built on data lake uh, and today we are uh, talking about a lake house uh, the lake house complete architecture is completely driven by delta lake concept and basically uh, databricks also has introduced a spark and uh, spark is still a core engine so where the databricks will run but uh, delta lake is something different so delta lake is not a like a core it's not an engine or it's not a compute power where the your actual code will go and run rather delta lake uh, is a kind of a, like a framework or architecture uh, so that uh, that actually builds the vision of uh, lake house uh, platform right so before uh, proceeding if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications so let's get started Before uh, actually going to the in-depth concept of Delta Lake, let us understand what Delta Lake is and also it is very parallelly important that uh, to understand what Data Lake is not, right? So first let us understand what Data Lake is. A data Lake is a definitely it's an open source project with, uh, which is driven by Databricks. Uh, so since it's an open source community, like uh, there are a lot of uh, changes, uh, very regular changes that you can see in the Databricks. Uh, Databricks releases a lot of uh, versions, as you can see, like uh, if you are observing closely, if you observe closely, you will come to know. There will be a lot of changes or the improvements uh, like Databricks is bringing. So that is uh, backed by the open source community, right? And also it, like it's built on standard data formats. Uh, like uh, it is actually like, if you take example of a Delta format, uh, right? Delta file format. So Delta file file format is uh, again is built on a parquet file format, and Delta Lake is also built on top of a, like a famous uh, file formats like uh, Avro, JSON, right? So you can build Delta Delta Lake on top of uh, any kind of file formats, but uh, major uh, the file format uh, which is used for optimized storage and compute uh, is the parquet parquet file format in Delta Lake, and it's also optimized for the cloud object storage. That means uh, we might use Azure, uh, we might use uh, GCS, I mean uh, GCP basically, or you might also use uh, the AWS as a backend cloud storage uh, to store your data. But uh, it is it is basically optimized for uh, storing any kind of uh, data in, in these cloud uh, storages. So it basically creates a framework uh, which enables the optimization on top of uh, like storage or the computation. And also scalable metadata means uh, like if it might be a small data, it might be a huge data, right? It, it doesn't matter whether the, whether the data is small or the data keeps on growing. Uh, like if the data keeps on growing, there will be a backend, uh, not only the data, also the metadata of it uh, will start uh, uh, storing. I mean, we need to store the metadata, right? Like the versioning concept of it, how the data is changed, the auditing uh, of the data, like how it has been changed over the time. So even that uh, is uh, uh, Delta Lake enables uh, in a more scalable way because it is backed by the cloud object storages. Uh, so it it, uh, it doesn't matter, right? So what is the volume of the data here? So that is what the Delta Lake is. And it's also parallel important to understand what Delta Lake is not because there is a lot of misconception uh, people have about a Delta Lake. Uh, so it is very important to kind of uh, understand uh, what is not, what Delta Lake is not also, right? So if you see Delta Lake is not a storage uh, medium. So basically it is not like where you where you go and store the file. It is not a database, right? Or it is not a storage service basically. And it's all it's not also a storage format. There is no file format or the storage format that Delta Lake will provide. You can ask Delta, Delta is a file format. No, Delta is not a file format. It is actually a, a framework that is built on the file format. So it is not a storage uh, format also, and it is not a database or it is not a data warehouse, right? 
and uh, if you ask me it is not a data lake also right i mean if you go in deep it is not a data lake also it is something built on top of data lake and uh, like it is not a programming language also like a uh, few people think might think uh, there is some programming language to kind of a uh, code the data delta lake right so it is not so we use a programming language we can use python we can use r scala or sql kind of a programming languages uh, to kind of query this right it is not a programming language also and it is not a cloud service provider because as you know cloud service data bricks is dependent on the different cloud services like uh, Azure, AWS, GCP, right? So they are backed with a strong cloud uh, partners uh, to provide the cloud services. So Delta Lake is not a, they don't uh, kind of uh, provide any cloud services. Okay. So I hope this is clear uh, the what Delta Lake and Delta Lake is not. So both concepts are equally important to understand here. And the next concept is enabling and the Delta Lake uh, definitely enables the asset to the object storage. What that means is like uh, if you are familiar with any kind of a SQL or any kind of a database concepts, so you might be aware of what is the importance of asset uh, uh, transactions, what we call right. Uh, and uh, if you are talking about uh, OLTP systems where you have a transactions and there uh, it is very important to kind of a asset have a asset uh, kind of a uh, storage service uh, that that uh, kind of a have uh, or maintain the transactions uh, on the real time. Right. But uh, if you are again, if you are in a data lake or if you are kind of a data engineer also, you can understand the importance of uh, this uh, asset transaction because data is not always static. Right. So data which is stored, uh, it might get, uh, I mean, regularly appended, updated, inserted, right, or deleted. So whatever might can happen. Right. And there might be a uh, simultaneous operations uh, uh, like uh, transactions can happen on a particular row. Or a particular table so which actually kind of becomes important to kind of maintain the data consistency here and so i i don't go in deep explaining this each one of this because these are very basic concepts so and are not scope of this video i would say but i mean what we can explain now what databricks actually how how databricks actually supports or enables asset transactions right so it basically like uh, uh, if you're not using asset transactions right uh, let's take an example if you are uh, working in a plain data lake uh, kind of a concept so there what happens is it's very hard to append the data if you have worked in uh, pure data lake uh, concepts or a blob kind of storage or kind of a s3 bucket kind of a concepts right so it's very difficult to kind of uh, append the data because they are just stored in a file format and there is no control uh, over uh, the data how can we kind of uh, append the incremental appends right and also if you want to modify the existing data like if you want to like update a particular record uh, where the transaction id is so and so and tra transaction date in date is so and so it is very kind of a difficult to kind of uh, go and search the particular files and kind of update it right and also if there is a failure in the job right uh, like uh, job will not, if the job fails in the midway it's very difficult to kind of a roll back if you are not using a asset transaction based backed support right storage support so if you use asset transaction like where data bricks or the delta format will definitely take care of jobs and it will not fail the midway whether it will fail successfully or whether it will fail with a failure right and also there is a real time operation so the, this is a most important concept right so even though there are a real time transactions happening okay on top of your data so even then the asset transaction is making i mean made sure by the data bricks at delta lake format that's the important thing whether it's a batch or whether it is a real time uh, data so in both the cases uh, your data will be asset compliant in data lake and uh, it's also i mean uh, Databricks also kind of a takes care of your data to kind of uh, have different versions of uh, uh, keep the different versions of the data. Like uh, if the, if your data is accidentally deleted or updated, you have an audit or you have a history of the data, so you can you can basically time travel uh, to the different uh, previous versions of the data. So that that actually uh, comes by default uh, with uh, uh, Delta Delta Lake uh, format in Databricks. So that's also very important. Uh, to backtrack or uh, triage any issues, data issues. 
so hope you are clear how actually like acid is enabled so this is very important to understand if you closely observe if you are just using a data lake so these are not supported if you are just using any storage services which is a file format any file format parquet json csv this will these are not supported by default but if you built a build a framework around this uh, using a data lake uh, or a delta i mean sorry uh, using a delta uh, lake uh, using a delta table concept so then it become a asset compliant so that's the beauty of uh, using the delta lake tables or delta lake concept so finally how to create a delta lake in databricks which is the most important it's it's rather very very simple thing you create anything any table in databricks so that the default format itself is a delta format so that means you are not missed out uh, by i mean creating or missing creating the delta lake uh, tables so anything any table you create without giving any uh, format uh, like a explicit format right in that case it will be a delta format and you can call it as a delta table basically so hope uh, it was useful thanks for watching